But you all have families in the outside world. What reactions do you get from them for living here in this sort of lifestyle? It's <coughs> different. Obviously, each parent's different. You know. they, my mother's getting used to the idea because I've been doing it for quite a while. And some, some parents that really understand it and really like it. My mother's very it. pleased about yeah. it. She likes it. Why? Well, because she, she sees it as, as a steady job for me, which is something that she's always wanted me to do, is get a steady job. <laughs> That is funny. It's great. <laughs> well, obviously, there's, there's, there's a certain amount of curiosity among people who don't live in this way as to what goes on in, in, in this sort of setup. And I imagine maybe we'll see it as a sort of permanent orgy and assume that everybody is practicing free love. Is this, in fact, what you do? How, how do you work out personal relationships? As they work out. How does anybody work out yeah, personal relationships? Quite naturally. A lot, of, a lot of people are living as couples, actually. Seems to be working that way. But you've got more or less equal numbers. I mean, more are the less. partners swapping all the time? No, no, no. I haven't really had that at all. I mean, we've only been going a short while, not all that long. So really, uh, relationships here are as permanent as, uh, no. or impermanent as they might be anywhere else? Well, one couple are married. The rest of us are just sort of living together at the minute. Yeah. Is she looking right in the camera? Will <laughs> 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 the parents actually bring the child up, or will it be a, no, they be the child of the whole of group? Child, the whole group can't really help me. No. Which I think is advantageous. Why? Because then you, the parents don't lay their neuroses on their child. The child can see a whole lot of people living. They do, and everybody else does as well. <laughs> it has well, group neuroses it's, rather than more diluted. Yeah, yeah, but that's going to be slightly more diluted than, than a. And also, and I really felt that I was inhibited by the way I was brought up, and the fact that my mother and father laid their trip very heavily on me all the time. That was the only reality. I had to see it their way. Um, I mean, even an uncle, you know, even an uncle or something might offer a whole new world to you when you're a kid. Yeah. So, I mean, imagine what ten other people would do. Yeah. If you didn't them. But what will you do, though, about um, sort of practical things in the upbringing of children, um, like schooling, where they're going to be, you know, suddenly thrown in with other children who've been brought up in a totally different way? Will you be able to help them to overcome this sort of shock? Well, Shouldn't do, be they'll, be, they'll be more able to cope with it. I mean, you know, ha having, ha having spent the first five years of their life in an environment like this, that they'll, they'll be at home with that, with other people, you know. Whereas, I mean, if, if a child is brought up with seeing only two people and perhaps a brother and sister and is suddenly thrown in with, with 500 other kids, you know, it's, it's, that's, that's the shock, you know. I know you're you're expecting your first baby now. Um, uh, do you intend to bring that up very closely yourselves, or are you going to make it a child of the community and allow everybody to have a go at uh, bringing it up? Have a go. Well, we'd, we'd like, I'd like personally for everyone to feel as responsible as I do for the child. And it's difficult because, you know, some of the men don't really know how to look after a child. There's one child here, for instance, who's sort of more close to her mother and his father, his mother and father, because some of us are incapable of looking after babies in a way. But I'd like 
to train everyone to do that. Jim, through your father, Lord Harwood, and now your stepfather, Jeremy Thorpe, you're associated with two very much establishment figures. What does your family think of uh, your living like this? Do they understand what you've done? Well, I mean, I don't know how much sort of physically they understand. I mean, you know, what the life is like. I think, I think they can sort of see that it's a strong enough force somehow that's keeping me doing what I'm doing. I, mean, I don't think they can question that no, it's just a sort of hobby, you know, that I picked up doing. Because, I mean, I mean, just from the practical reason that it's costing thousands of pounds. I mean, all the equipment, you know. But I think actually to actually try and make them understand, I think I could actually get through my mother much more, you know. Because I mean, the thing is, they're quite open to it. But um, I don't know, it's sort of quite difficult, you know. So what, what sort of relationship? I get on with them, you know, to, you know, to a large extent. But would you say there is a gap between you, probably because of the fact that you live here? Yeah, but I would say it's created probably just as much by me as by them. You know? But how much richer do you feel your life is by living here in this way than if, say, you'd bought a semi outside somewhere? It's closer to nature. There's more natural resources to draw from, you know, for inspiration. I mean, musically, say, if you're talking from music point of view. I, I just find it sort of so much clearer for me. I can get much higher. You know? Do you see yourself still living like this when you're 64? Yeah, well, tribal. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I can only really speak for now. Yeah. I mean, I hope so. <laughs> okay. Can you swim? Can you swim? Are you a good swimmer? <laughs> <laughs>